Hello all. Today we are going to start a new lesson, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. But before we will practice about this, let's try to remember first of all, what does the rational expression mean and how to multiply, divide the rational expressions. So, let's see. Rational expression, it means fraction that has the form n to d, in which n is the numerator, d is the denominator, such that denominator does not equal to 0, because if denominator it is 0, then the fraction does not exist. Remember that denominator represents total equal parts and numerator is the parts taken from the total. So if there is no total, how are we supposed to take something from nothing? So then always put the condition of the existence of the fraction, which means denominator does not equal to zero. And we can say that the domain is real numbers minus the element zero. Our lesson for today is about multiply and divide fractions. So let's say if we multiply two fractions, a over b times c over d, in which b, d, they are not equals to zero. Remember that before we multiply, we have to get it into the simplest form. We have to simplify and at the end we will multiply a times c over b times d. So first of all, simplify. And second, multiply. For example, 2 over 4 times 10 over 5 equals. So before we will multiply, we have to simplify. So to simplify fraction, we look for the common factors between numerator and the denominator. So we have here 2 and here 4. The common factor it is 2. So we can simplify by 2. 2 divided 2 is 1 and 4 divided 2 it is 2. We can simplify more by 2, and this is 5. We can simplify more by 5, so it will be equals to 1. 1 times 1 over 1 times 1, it will be equals 1. So keep it in your mind, very important. First of all, we simplify and after we multiply. But to simplify a fraction, it means to divide numerator and denominator by their common factor. Which, know it, which we know it is called the GCF. So when we have to work with expressions, numerator, denominator, we will have to factor them that we can check if we can simplify or not. And if it is about divide fractions, a over b divided by c to d, then remember that first fraction, always keep it as it is, divide changes into times, the reciprocal of the second fraction, which it will be d to c. And again, first, simplify. And second, multiply. But to simplify, you need to factor each part of these fractions. So, let's see. On page 211, we have question number two. Simplify each expression and state the domain. I'm going to take the first one. Uh, this is called the rational expression. 
yes, in which numerator, denominator, both of them, they are polynomials. So first of all, we will put the condition of the existence, remember, numerator to denominator, in which denominator does not equal to zero, we put the condition that we can find the domain of the function. In our case, denominator is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x not equals to 0. We make it, we will make it equals to 0 and solve for x. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x equals to 0, which is a polynomial equation, so we have to factor it in order that we can solve it. The common factor between the three terms, it is x. So from x cubed, x times x squared, it will be x cubed minus 2x and minus 3 equals to 0. Factor more the trinomial quadratic in negative 3. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 1, it will be negative 2. So it's x times x minus 3 times x plus 1 not equals to 0. From the first factor, x does not equals to 0. From the second one, x does not equal to 3, and from the last factor, x does not equal to negative 1. So the domain, it will be real numbers minus these elements. Negative 1, 0, 3. Because if x is one of them, if we substitute into this expression, denominator it will be 0, which is impossible. So, now what we have left to do is to factor the numerator, because already denominator we factor it into here. So, let's see. We have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals, so 1 what times what is 1 and when we add this 2, it will be 1 times 1, which is a perfect square. It's x plus 1, all of it square. Then we can write x plus 1 all square over the denominator in factored form. It's x times x minus 3 times x plus 1. The common factor, it is x plus 1. Remember that x plus 1 squared, it came from x plus 1 times x plus 1. So we have the common factor x plus 1. We can simplify by it. And in simplest form, it's x plus 1 over x times x minus 3. Let's try more. So first of all, we put the condition of the existence, which is denominator does not equal to 0. So in question B, we have denominator x squared plus 3x minus 4 does not equal to 0. Solve for x. So x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals to 0, factor it, uh, we can factor it in 4 and negative 1, let's see, 4 times negative 1, negative 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3, so in factor it form, it will be x plus 4 times x minus 1 does not equals to 0, from the first factor x does not equal negative 4, and from the second one, x does not equal to 1. So domain, it will be real numbers minus the elements, negative 4 and 1. Now, we come back and we have to factor numerator, we have to factor denominator. Already denominator, we factor it into here to get the domain. So we have to factor the numerator. We have x cubed plus 4x squared minus x 
minus 4 equals. So the polynomial expression, it has four terms. And if you remember, to factor the four terms, we will use the grouping. From each group, we we'll take the common factor. The common factor between x cubed and 4x squared, it is x squared times x plus 4. The common factor negative x negative 4 is negative 1, so negative x plus 4. And now again, we will factor it, so it will be x plus 4 times x squared minus 1. And x squared minus 1, it is difference between perfect square, so we can factor more into x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now we'll come back and we can write the numerator in factored form is x plus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. All over the denominator in factored form, we have it here, x plus 4 times x minus 1 and equals. We have common factor x plus 4, so simplify by it. Also, x minus 1, it's a common factor, simplify by it. So the answer, it will be x plus 1. Let's see, on page 212, find the simplified form of each product and give the domain. So I'm going to start with question A. As we said, domain from denominator not equals to zero. And we have two fractions, so we have to take them both. So nine minus x does not equals to zero, which means x does not equal to nine. From the second denominator, x squared plus 14x plus 40 does not equal to 0. So 40, we can factor it into 4 times 10. So 4 times 10, 44 plus 10, 14. So we can factor it into x plus 4 times x plus 10 does not equal to 0 from the first one x does not equal to negative 4, and from the second factor, x does not equal to negative 10. So then the domain, it will be all the real numbers minus the elements. From the first one, we have 9, and negative 4, negative 10, so negative 10, negative 4, and 9. Now, we take the numerator, and denominator each one of them and we will factor them. x squared minus 16, it's the uh, difference between perfect squares. So we can factor it into x minus 4 times x plus 4. All over the common factor between 9 and negative x, I will put it in standard form. So take the common factor, the negative outside, it will be x minus 9, times the second fraction. The numerator, so what times what is negative? 90, and when we add, it's a positive 1. So one of the factor, it will be negative, the other one positive. So 10 times negative 9, so 10 and negative 9. So 10 times negative 9 is negative 90, and 10 minus 9, it's 1. And down, already, this denominator, we factor it into here. So all we have to do is to copy it. x plus 4 times x plus 10. And now we look for the common factor between numerator and denominator. Let's see. We, have, we will take the factors one by one. So the first factor, x minus 4. And go down and check. Is it any other factor, x minus 4? No. So then this one, I'm going to keep it. I cannot simplify by it. I take the second factor, x plus 4, and I can see it here down. So we can simplify by it. I go check the second factor. It's x plus 10. I have it up and I have it down. So I can simplify by it. 
and the last factor x minus 9 up and x minus 9 down. So we can simplify by it and the negative in front. So this equals negative x, distribute the negative plus 4. This is the simplest form. First of all, we look for domain, denominator not equals to zero. So we'll take each denominator and make it not equals to zero. The first one, 4x does not equal to zero. From here, x does not equal to zero. So 4x. 6x plus 18 does not equal to zero. So x does not equal, it will be negative three. And from the last one, 4x plus 12 does not equal to 0, so x does not equal to negative 3. Then the domain, it will be real numbers minus the elements, 0, negative 3. Now, as we did in the previous example, we will take each numerator, denominator, and we will factor it x plus 3, this binomial, so only two terms, is no common factor between them, so we keep it as it is. We put it, x plus 3 over 4x, it came from 4 times x, times the second fraction, the second numerator, the common factor between 3 and 18, it is 3, so it will be 3 times x minus 6 over down in denominator the common factor it is 6 so 6 times x plus 3 times the last fraction x squared it came from x times x and the common factor 4 and 12 it is 12 times x plus 3 and now look for common factor between numerator and denominator that we can simplify. So we will take them one by one. The first numerator x plus 3 and we see down x plus 3 so we can simplify by it. The second factor it is 3 and down we have 6 so we can simplify by 3. Here left 2 x minus 6, we don't have any denominator x minus 6. Factor x up here and here down, so we can simplify by it. And let's check again. It's nothing that else that we can simplify. Then we will multiply. In place of numerator, it is left x times x minus 6. And for denominator, 4 times 2, 8. 8 times 12, 96 times x plus 3. You can leave it as it is or you can distribute. Let's distribute. It will be x squared minus 6x over 96x plus 3618288288. So you can leave it in this form or you can distribute and put it in this form. Both of them, they are correct. Let's try more. Page 213, find the simplified quotient and the domain of each expression. So for the domain, as we did before, denominator does not equal to zero. Yes? And we will have, in question 1, I will try to do it direct, yes, the denominator, remember that to divide fractions, the first fraction, we keep it. Divide changes into times the reciprocal of the second one. So now we look for the domain, x squared plus 9x does not equal to 0. We will factor it, x, x plus 9 does not equal to 0. So from here, x does not equal 0 and x does not equal to negative 9. 
From the second fraction, 6 minus x does not equal to 0, so x does not equal to 6. So the domain, it will be real numbers minus the elements 0, negative 9, 6, so negative 9, 0, and 6. And now we have to factor exactly as we did before the numerator denominators all. 1 is 1 over the common factor. Already we factor in this expression. It is x times x plus 9 times the common factor between 3x squared and negative 18. It's the 3x. So x minus 6 all over. The common factor, because we'll put it in standard form, is negative x minus 6. And now let's check. So we have factors x up and down. We can simplify by it. The other common factor is the expression x minus 6. The negative, it came from factor negative 1. So we can give it 2, 3. 3 to negative 1 is negative 3. So in simplest form, it will be negative 3 over x plus 9. Or we can write negative 3 over x plus 9. Let's try more. B. So to divide fractions, the first one we keep it. 2x squared minus 12x all over x plus 5. Divide changes into times the reciprocal of the second fraction, which it will be x plus 5 over x minus 6. And now the domain x plus 5 does not equal to 0, which means x does not equal to negative 5. And x minus 6 does not equal to 0, which means x does not equal to 6. So the domain... It will be real numbers minus the elements, negative 5, 6. And equals, we will factor the numerator denominators. Now let's see. The first numerator, the common factor, it is 2x. And here x minus 6. All over, x plus 5 is not common factor between, so we'll keep it as it is, times, we cannot factor numerator denominator, so we'll keep them as they are. And now let's look for common factors up and down in the fractions. So 2, I go down and check, I don't have any constant number here, x is no any monomial x, and I see x minus 6 factor up and down, so I can simplify by it, and x plus 5, x plus 5, so the simplest form, it will be 2x. On page 240, the company compares the ratio of surface area to volume. So then I will keep it here, surface area to volume for two containers. So one container is a regular prism with a square base. So let me draw it. Prism and the base, it's a square. which means the length and width, they are equal. And let's put x, x. The other container, it's a regular piece with rectangular base. So then let's draw one more rectangular piece. And here the base, it's a rectangle. In which this is the length, this is the width. One side of the base, 
one side of the base is equal to the side length of the first container. The first container, the side length, we put x. So if here x, let's say this length, it is x2. And the other side is, which means the width, is twice as long as this one. So it will be 2x. The surface area of this second container, it is already given. So under the second container, I will put surface area is 4x squared plus 6xh. The heights of the two containers are equal. So this is height and this is height. It's the same one. Which has the smaller surface area to volume ratio? So that we can answer this question for each one of the prisms, for each one of the containers, we have to find the surface area and the volume. So I will start with the second container because already here surface area is given. So all I have left is the volume. But before this, let me remind it to you. For any prism, the volume is area base of the prism times the height of that prism. And the surface area of the prism is 2 times area base plus perimeter base times height. So I'm going to apply these two formulas in order that I can find the volume surface area for the two containers. So I will start from here. Volume is area base. The base here is a rectangle. And area rectangle is length times width. So the area base it will be x times 2x times height. So the volume is 2x squared. H. Now, I will find the volume and surface area for the first container. So, volume equals area base. In this case, the base, it's a square. So, it will be x squared times h. And the surface area, I will take it on the other slide. that you can see it clear and it's good this question is good because we can review volume surface area for prism so this is x x and h so surface area it will be 2 times area base so the base it's the square and it will be x times x which means x square plus Perimeter base, it's the perimeter square, which is 4x, times the height. So we got it. Now all we have left is to find the ratio surface area to volume for, we, for each one of the containers. So I'm going to continue. I will take the first container. And in fact, I will name it this one, container 1, and this one, container 2. So I find the first ratio for the container 1. So the volume is, I will name it ratio 1. 2x squared plus 4xh over x squared h. I'll get the ratio in the simplest form. So the common factor between the two terms, it is x, that I can simplify down. So 2x plus 4h all over x squared times h. Simplify by x. So the first ratio, it will be 2x plus 4h all over x h. This is the ratio 1. Now I'm going to go back and find the ratio for the second container. So ratio 2 equals 
the surface area, the common factor 2x, and here left 2x plus 3h, all over the volume, which is 2x square h, simplify by 2, simplify by x, so the ratio to it is 2x plus 3h all over xh. The question was, which has the smaller ratio? So it's what we have left is to compare these two ratios. To say which one is smaller or greater, we have to compare these two ratios. So let's see, ratio 1 okay. So 2h plus 2x plus 4h over xh compare it with 2x plus 3h all over xh. So we have to compare to fractions. Think about fractions, not expressions. So when you look in these two fractions, the numerator, the denominator, it's the same. So you can simplify by it. In left and right of the comparison, we have 2x, 2x, it's the same term. We can simplify by it. And we have left 4h to compare it with 3h. So definitely simplify, if you want to simplify by h, it will be this one greater than the second one. So the ratio to, it will be less than the ratio 1. Thank you.